Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Deer and Fry Water Street Solutions. We did have mixed trade in both grain and livestock futures on Friday. And let's pick this apart. First of all, soybeans again making new lows for the move today. And Darren, I mean, has it all been about South American weather or are the funds just trying to all head for the door at the same time? Yeah, I think it's both of those things. We've had some nice rains uh, down in South America. We have a forecast for more and the funds are now net short soybeans. Uh, we were looking for 1269 and 1254 to hold. We kind of got down to that 1254. Uh, we'll see how things go as we enter another week of trading. But you know, uh, the market has not shown any price confirming action that we're ready to bottom. I think we're close, but we haven't seen it yet. So why is the market maybe not responded more to some of these private estimates that it continue to lower the Brazilian crop? Well, the Brazilian crop's coming down, but a lot of people know that it has to come down more. We probably need to get under 140 before the market is really concerned. And it's because does the crop shrink enough to give us enough export demand to make our ending stocks get tight and rally our market. And right now the trade just doesn't believe that's possible and that's why we keep leaking lower. Do you believe it's possible that we're, tr you know, a 140 million metric ton Brazil soybean crop? Yeah, I've been at 140 quite a while. I just think that we have a 15% decline off of 162, 165. And so I've been kind of thinking that for a long time. I haven't been proven right yet, but I could see the market uh, coming around to that, especially if we turn warmer and drier here in the extended forecast, and there's signs of that. So if we take those planted beans in November and December, it's about 57% of their crop, they're gonna need good weather from February into March to finish. So if we roll back warmer and drier, we could curb those yields too. Soybeans, we also had a marketing year low on exports. And have you been surprised that these lower prices haven't stimulated more demand? Well, we've seen some demand from Sino Grain on the soybean side. Corn exports have been decent up until this week. You know, yeah. we had the holiday trade. So they were miserable today, but I, I wouldn't worry about that. I, let's see what the next week or two, if that trend can reverse from today's results. Okay, corn making new contract lows yes. early in the week, tried to rebound, but again, a, a lower close here today. Where's the low gonna come in, do you think? You have numbers down here in this 460, clear down to 449 area, but much like soybeans at 1250, this is an area where you could expect maybe the market to turn. Don't know what USDA is gonna say next week, but if we'd get a shock like a two or three bushel decline in yield, and some of my data would say that maybe we're less than where they were on the November crop report, then we could have a shock along with Safrina weather to start this market higher. But right now there's no signs of a bottom in corn either. So did corn today just follow beans or was that that marketing year low in exports that kind of tipped us? I think over? it was both of those things. As beans come lower, you know, hey, corn's not gonna compete for acres, and not a need to keep corn prices up. We have plenty of carry out, there's no shortages. And of course, until wheat takes off and wheat kind of was rallying early and then kind of gave it up late. I just think corn is looking for direction from other commodities and right now it doesn't have any. Right. Is the market also a little bit concerned, especially on corn, that we might see a little uptick in yield or ending stocks in next week's report? It, it could be. I mean, it, you don't know what the USDA is going to do. Uh, all the data that we've collected from our client base across the United States would suggest that maybe bean yield has to go up in January report and corn yield has to come down a little bit. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll be wrong about those predictions, yeah. but it'll, it'll well, you know, it won't be long until we know. So wheat up just a little bit today, but the funds have covered a portion of their short position. Yes, they have. Does that mean the low is in? I think the low is in on Chicago. I'm not confident Kansas City or Minneapolis low is in, but Chicago, I'd be a buyer of Chicago in this area, the $6 area if we can pull back to there. I really like the action off of Thursday's low and you know we should see follow through to the upside. I think the soft red winter wheat uh, stocks have really been pulled down with all the interest from China off the P&W. Mm -hmm. And so we've gotten rid of some of that excess. So Chicago is gonna be the leader higher of the three classes. Yeah, and we did have like an outside day higher yesterday yes. that carried over. Yeah, we had a, a double close key reversal mm -hmm. outside bar combination for higher. It's a great signal. We'll see if we can get more follow through in the next week. Gotcha. Okay, cattle market, uh, two-sided trade early on, yep. but ending lower, and we did have a little bit lower cash trade in Nebraska, but do you think that was what tipped the market it over? It probably did. I think a lot of people, we had 175 earlier out of Iowa. I think people were looking for a higher trade here in the Thursday and Friday. We didn't get that, and so cattle sold off. I still like the upside of cattle. I think Feb and April cattle, June included, they're all gonna move higher into that March, April timeframe. 
So I'm not bearish cattle right now, but I am going to be bearish after we get this correction done. And I still think we got another $10 at least of up in cattle. You do? Okay. Yeah. But you don't think we go back and rechallenge the highs? No, I do not. Okay. I think we get up to 180, 185. That's probably about it. We also had a week where we had lower box beef values kind yes. of holding the market yes, back too, right? Yes, we did. And I expect beef prices to firm up here. Okay. But yeah, they took a, a hit early in the week, and I think that'll firm up here as we go forward in time. And hogs uh, turning around again yeah. here today. We had a limit up move in Feb yesterday. Is it spec buying because they're so oversold? I mean, we did score new contract lows this week. Yeah, we had a. We really didn't have a reversal like we did in cattle, um, but or excuse me, in in wheat, I should say. But hogs had a nice move up yesterday, kind of like a Ross hook reversal. They followed through today. I think hogs have put in a low. I'm looking up in that 80 to 85, maybe as high as 90 by summer. Okay. How about cattle hog spreads? Cattle lower today, hogs higher. Yeah. That's been a pretty popular it has trade, been, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and maybe that was some spread action today still with cattle down and hogs up as they've come out of those. But I would say that we're going to take both up into March, April. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Darren Thank you. Fry with Water Street Solutions. That is Markets Now.